Hi everyone, I'm Wendy and this is Show Me Mo Vegan, where I make easy whole food vegan meals. Today's video is a what I eat in a day Thanksgiving edition. So I'm taking a look back to show you everything I ate on Thanksgiving day as a whole food vegan. I have a pretty small family and we usually have no more than about five people for Thanksgiving, but this year it was even smaller. It ended up just being my mom, my dad, and me. Now, if you're vegan or plant-based, you know that usually the vegan is the odd man out at any holiday gathering. Even if you try your best not to mention it, it'll usually come up. Well, I'm actually pretty lucky because my parents are plant-based as well. I went vegan for ethical reasons, but then had so many health benefits, and when I looked into it and found the whole food plant-based lifestyle, I shared that information with my parents and they decided to give it a go. They were only gonna do it for three or four weeks just to see how it went, but they had so many great benefits that they decided to keep at it. So they've been whole food plant-based for over a year and a half now. So that means we had a 100% vegan and mostly whole food plant-based Thanksgiving. You'll see what I mean later. We used a few more highly processed foods than we eat in our everyday meals, but it is a holiday and it's nice to indulge once a year. So first things first, breakfast. I completely forgot to record my breakfast to show you, but that's because I'm a creature of habit and I eat the same thing every day for breakfast. If you've seen any of my previous what I eat in a day videos, you know that I always have oatmeal and a smoothie for breakfast and Thanksgiving was no different. For Thanksgiving, I had steel cut oats with blueberries and dates, cinnamon, and some flaxseed. And for my smoothie, it was actually mostly celery this time. So I get produce from a local farmer every week. And for Thanksgiving, we got tons of beautiful celery and it included all of the beautiful leaves. So my smoothie was mostly celery leaves. I also added some spinach and kale and I had banana and pineapple. And I always throw some soybeans in there for extra protein. After breakfast, it was time to get everything ready for Thanksgiving. So take a look at the vegan feast that my family enjoyed. First, we have the bread. We used to do a family recipe. My mom would make rolls, but this recipe was using refined flours and butter. So instead, my mom makes a whole wheat bread now. I think her recipe is just yeast, whole wheat flour, a little bit of date syrup, and water. So this time she made a double batch and she made one really large loaf and then these cute little baby loaves that were so adorable. And then here we have those little loaves in the center of the table. To the right of that, we have a cranberry sauce. We don't usually make a homemade cranberry sauce. We used to get the little jellied cranberries in a can, which actually is vegan. But this year, since it was just the three of us, we decided to make our own homemade cranberry sauce. We simply took the whole cranberries and cooked them in a pot on the stove with a mixture of dates and water. We took about a cup and a half of whole dates and blended them up with water, mixed that in, and then a little bit of cinnamon and some freshly squeezed orange juice. Then we have a mushroom gravy over in the bottom left corner. And we just used a recipe from the Esselstyn's. I think they call it Mommy's Mushroom Gravy. You can find it pretty much in any of the Esselstyn cookbooks. And then in the top left corner, we have our pasta salad. This is a recipe that we've been making for years and it was just accidentally vegan. So that was great because we always loved it so much. And it's basically just your run of the mill pasta salad. It starts with a bunch of different veggies. So we have some peppers, tomatoes, 
onions, and black olives. The only change we've made since turning to a whole food plant-based diet is that we use a whole grain pasta instead of just your typical white pasta. We use this one that's 100% whole wheat pasta. And then instead of using a regular Italian dressing that is loaded with tons of oil, we use this oil-free Italian dressing from Well Your World. It's just as delicious as your typical Italian dressing and so much healthier for you. And then we add some garbanzo beans, mix it all up with all of the veggies. This is a complete meal in itself, so we love having it on hand during the holidays for whenever we just need a quick meal. Here we have some corn. We used to always make a cream corn, which of course was loaded with saturated fat in the form of tons of butter and cream cheese. So instead of all of those artery clogging ingredients, we decided to just make this corn recipe. Next we have just plain old green beans. We used to make your typical green bean casserole, and there are plenty of vegan versions of it out there, but we just haven't made the time to try any of them out. Last year, we made the mistake of making one on Thanksgiving that we had never made before, and it turned out to be not so great. So this year, we decided just to do plain old green beans. Next up, we have dressing, or stuffing, however you like to call it. We never actually used it as a turkey stuffing, so it was always its own side dish. For this, we basically took my mom's family recipe and just made it whole food plant-based. So the original recipe calls for several sticks of butter. We simply omitted that altogether. And then we used this Ezekiel sprouted grain bread and we toasted that up and then chopped it up and mixed it with tons and tons of Thanksgiving spices, some celery, onions, and mushrooms. And here we have some lentil loaves. So this has lentils and oats and some different veggies in there and tons of spices again. And then we simply topped them with ketchup. This is only part of the batch that we made. Since it was just three of us at Thanksgiving, we only warmed up a few. With the rest of them, we actually just put the mushroom gravy on top and that was delicious as well. And of course, potatoes. You can never have enough potatoes and we had three different kinds. This is simply a mashed potato that we put into a casserole to heat up. And the secret ingredient is cauliflower. So we like to joke that this was our greens for the meal. We always like to include leafy greens with every meal, but we didn't really have any of that here with our Thanksgiving meal. But according to Dr. Esselstyn, cauliflower counts as your greens. And when you put it in something like this, you don't even notice it. Last year, we served this to some of our non-plant-based family members, and they didn't even know there was cauliflower in it until we told them. And here we have my personal favorite, party potatoes. These are known by many names. We always called them party potatoes. I think they're also called funeral potatoes or simply cheesy potato casserole. Again, the original recipe is loaded with all sorts of unhealthy ingredients like butter and cheese, so we found a healthier recipe. So we start with a base of potatoes. You could use shredded potatoes, but we've always gone with the little cubed hash brown potatoes. And it's just one ingredient, potatoes. And instead of cheese and butter to make the filling, we used a combination of white beans and cashews. You could omit the cashews altogether and use all white beans. But we did a combination of the two, using just a few cashews to get that really nice rich flavor, and then the white beans to make up the bulk of that sauce. So we blended those up with some soy milk and nutritional yeast and other spices, poured it over the potatoes, and then once you bake it, it looks like this. And then of course we need that cornflake topping. Typical cornflakes have refined sugars and probably other things you don't want in them, so we found this one that is sweetened with fruit juice instead of sugar. This isn't something that we would eat on a regular basis, but it's a holiday and so we indulged just a little bit. We did, however, make one more change. Usually the cornflakes are also mixed with a stick of butter. We could have used vegan butter, but we don't like to eat oil of any kind. So we simply crushed up the cornflakes, put them on top, and then spritzed it with a little vinegar and then we sprinkled some nutritional yeast and a no salt seasoning just to give it a little bit of flavor. And this tastes just as delicious as I remember. 
Like I said, this was always my personal favorite. We always made a joke that everyone else would take out a scoop or two of these potatoes, and then I would take the rest of the casserole dish. I really did eat tons of these potatoes, and I always felt absolutely terrible afterwards. But this version, I can eat as much as I want, and I feel energized. That's the power of whole food plant-based eating. And then we have our third kind of potatoes, a sweet potato casserole. Of course, we used to always do the marshmallow topping. We decided to do a crumble topping of rolled oats, walnuts, and pecans. And then we also mixed in just a little bit of date syrup to get it to stick together. And then just to indulge a little bit for the holiday, we did add a few vegan marshmallows. There are a few different vegan marshmallow brands and so far they've been tasty for us. So we used this one this time. Again, this is a highly processed food. So this is not something that we eat on a regular basis, but we decided to use it for this once a year tradition. So there you have it, that is our holiday spread. We do buffet style, so we all get a little bit of everything, and then of course the extras on the table. And there you have it, there is my Thanksgiving plate. Honestly, it really doesn't look all that different from my Thanksgiving plates in the past. Really the only difference is the lentil loaves instead of turkey. And I didn't miss the turkey. Check out that loaded plate. The thing I love about a whole food vegan diet is you can eat as much as you want and feel amazing afterwards. You never have to worry about a food hangover. And even after stuffing ourselves silly, of course there was still room for dessert. We made two different desserts this year. We used to always have a traditional pecan or pecan pie, however you say it, but this time we decided to do this bar. And I gotta say, it tastes almost exactly like I remember pecan pie. And then of course it's not Thanksgiving without a pumpkin pie. This vegan version was delicious. We always eat our Thanksgiving meal at lunchtime and by dinner time, nobody's usually very hungry because we've eaten so much. And this is where that pasta salad is great. So for dinner, I ended up just having a little salad along with that pasta salad. And there's a piece of that whole grain bread with some cranberry sauce on top. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I ate as a whole food vegan on Thanksgiving. Hit the thumbs up and leave a comment down below to let me know what you enjoy for Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.